Good morning YouTube and welcome to this next edition of the Evian blog. Today I thought, well, people are always asking me what is exactly in your, inside your workshop, what do you use? Um, so today I thought, well, I'm going to give you guys a bit of a rundown of uh, my electronics lab dash workshop and show you guys what I have, how it's set up, what I use it for uh, and that sort of thing. So this might take a bit of time, but um, let's get into the gear and let's uh, see what Evian Labs is all about. Okay guys, so let's get into this. Right now we are looking at um, one section on my bench. So I'm just going to go through these items. I'm not going to go zooming into each one um, because I think a lot of you already know what a lot of these things are. So we're just going to make it simple. Over here we've got an old Hitachi 20 megahertz dual trace oscilloscope used mostly for audio work. Here is a dual channel laboratory DC power supply with current limiting. It also has a little 5 volt output here on the back. Um, it's 3 amps per rail. It can be paralleled or series to give me 60 volts or uh, 30 volts uh, 3 amps. Uh, 60 volts, sorry, 30 volts 6 amps if you if you if you run it in. Um, in, in parallel or it can give me 60 volts at 3 amps in series or independently I've got two 0 to 30 volts 3 amp outputs and a 5 volt 3 amp output. This little guy works very well, he's been with me a while. Then up here on the top left, these guys over here are connected to a switch mode power supply above. Let me just swing back and show you. There it's hiding uh, behind the little yellow guy over there, the Minion. Um, that runs that rail over there, which um, I use for charging and testing various things. The rail's got uh, 3.3, 5, 9, and 12 volts, and then two ground outputs, and then also those 5 volts USB plugins. I have a 50 ohm, 100 watt RF dummy load. Um, it's used mostly for testing radio equipment. It also has two sniffer outputs. Um, for sampling RF at a lower power. Um, this over here is just a homemade oscillator and some little boxes. Um, this is an Agilent 53132A uh, frequency counter. It does have the ovenized crystal upgrade and it has been calibrated recently so that thing is spot on. Um, it's actually a lovely piece of kit. Let's actually show you guys what it looks like turned on. Um, as you can see, lots of information, lots of digits over there. That thing is fantastic. Um, also used a lot in my alignment procedures and stuff like that. Then just above that, we have an old traditional function generator. I do use it a little bit, but not as often now that I have a, um, a digital controlled unit. Um, but it is still there if it's needed, and it also doubles up as a, a second frequency counter. So yeah, that's pretty much the first part the second and see what we have there. Okay, so on this side of the world, starting from bottom left over here, we have a variable 13.8 power supply. It can be adjusted from about 1 volts to about 15 volts, um, but it's preset on 13.8. 30 amp uh, power supply, it's not switch mode. Um, that is used to feed a bench rail system for testing two-way radios and high-powered HF rigs that require the additional power. In the center of here is my little homemade box. You can input uh, any voltage up to 30 volts and it will give you a variable 0 to 30 volt output, a 3.3 and a 5 volt, used mostly for prototyping. This guy over here I got purely because my digital uh, lab power supply, well you can actually never have enough power supplies, but my digital lab power supply, when you place a VHF or UHF uh, handheld transmitter onto it, occasionally the display goes a bit wonky, so you cannot see what the actual current drain is, whereas with this guy here he's got two analog meters, he works. This guy does uh, 0 to 40 volts at up to 2.5 amps, good for testing power supplies, projects, all sorts of, not testing power supplies, testing radios, projects, etc. And moving on up over here, we have a leader LDM171 distortion meter, and then uh, almost like part of the set, the leader 192A audio tester. Um, these guys are used mostly for doing uh, audio level work, uh, like microphone design, that sort of thing, uh, which I do a fair amount of for the ham radio and CB radio communities. 
Um, let's move on up to the top section of the bench now. Let's have a look at some of the items up there. Starting from over here on the left, um, we have this guy over here, which is a VHF ham radio. Um, it's used for monitoring the local repeaters and such. Uh, my favorite little ball, a little 3 amp power supply because this guy is just for monitoring some miscellaneous bits lying around. There I've got a UHF and a dual band handheld. My speaker is connected to my computer. That is my Tech 2465 300 MEG 4 channel scope. Um, beautiful piece of kit. Uh, very useful for working in the RF fields and stuff like that. Um, so let's move on across the bench over now and uh, to my next piece of kit, which is one of my pride, pride and joy items. Oh, while we add it, if you look at the bottom here, there's various little meters and power supplies slotted in here. There's that switch mode I talk about that runs that rail that's below here. It's an old PC power supply which I've converted. That is a variable power supply used also for testing purposes. I, I don't use it often, but it is there just in case it's needed um, with the volt meter installed. Then uh, this is a SWR and power meter for a VHF UHF equipment. It does from 140 to 525 megahertz. Above that over here, we've got my Fluke PM3394B 200 megahertz combi scope. Combi scope being that it is a digital and analog oscilloscope. So when you power it up, it can be used either as a digital or an analog, um, which is quite nice for doing measurements. So not only do you get your traditional sort of... Um, let me just uh, set up here traditional sort of analog scope like that uh, let's get in a little bit closer not only is it your traditional sort of uh, scope but it also can be switched to digital mode like so and then we can do various measurements and such on it uh, like your peak to peak values etc um, and it's all there on the screen ready for you to view uh, fantastic piece of hardware uh, probably some of the better money that I've spent and um, as we head along let's just go back out here okay so we've seen the, the combi scope over here um, that I actually use that quite a fair amount. Uh, over here we have an HP 8620C sweep oscillator. Sweep oscillators are used and great for testing filters uh, and various RF projects and that sort of thing. Um, quite a nice piece of kit to that. Normally on, on top of it is another, it's my HP RF 0 to 1 GHz RF signal generator, which I don't have yet at the moment, but it'll be back shortly. Uh, just a little bit to the right of all of that, we have my desoldering station. Now what that basically is, is a desoldering gun which you can place in, pull the trigger and it sucks the solder off. So no need to sit with a little solder pump sucky sucky stories. Um, below that over here we have an HF or actually 0 to 200 megahertz SWR power meter. Then over here we have a Marconi Instruments TF2304 AM FM modulation tester, also used on the RF side of things. One piece of equipment that I didn't mention, um, which is normally also up on the shelves over here, is my IFR1200S, which is actually an RF test set. It's used purely for RF radio frequency work. And one more item which I didn't talk about, but I did uh, have on display, is this guy over here. This is a 100 megahertz two-channel digital storage oscilloscope. Mostly used for digital work, um, low voltage stuff, sort of your general items, but also when you're wanting to capture waveforms and stuff like that. This is quite nice, especially on the development side of things. Um, my Fluke Combi Scope also has the option of capturing waveforms because it is digital and analog, and it is a lot more versatile. But this little guy over here, is a little lifesaver when you want to just do some quick measurements and stuff like that because it's all nice and pretty and on the screen for you to use. Um, when we put it away, we get sort of a, a whole 
plethora of information which comes up, which can tell us just about anything. Um, I also use it as a, a spectrum analyzer, um, using the, the FFT side of it, which is quite nice. Um, for example, if we go to here, and we hit the math function, we go down to our FFT, there you have your spectrum analyzer ready for testing filters or radio equipment and such. It's, it's, it's a really a nice piece of kit. And I, like I say, useful for many things. Granted, my Fluke uh, Combi Scope does exactly the same thing and it has the benefit of 200 megahertz. But where it is different is my Fluke Combi Scope can, only, can do 25 giga samples per second repetitive. But on single shot, it can only do 200 mega samples per second. This guy will do one giga sample per second both ways. So here we have a few of the multimeters that I make use of, uh, various meters actually. Starting on the left, we have a MESR 100 ESR meter used for testing caps. Then we have a Brainman TBM811 uh, digital multimeter. A Unity UT603 uh, LCR meter, capacitors, inductors, etc., and can do resistance. Then we have my Brayman TBM829, which is one of my favorite multimeters. We have a bit of a homemade meter of mine, which is a PWM meter. Uh, a lot of these meters can do it. We have my Fluke 87 Series 52 RMS multimeter. And in front of that, we have one of those Chinese uh, non contact. Uh, uh, thermometers which is uh, quite nice for checking heat sink temperatures and stuff. I have about five or six other meters but these are the ones that I make use of most of the time.